Hey everybody, Jim here. Thanks for joining in. The air and the water are getting warmer here, which means the dive season is right around the corner. So, good time to review some basics. Today's topic is the buddy system, which includes the buddy check. Today is going to be a review of the buddy check system. There are a few variabilities and I have my own system. I'm kind of curious what you folks do out here. By the way, we're just talking recreational. Also, there's going to be a quick review of some buddy skill basics. And again, I would like to hear from you folks. And if you're still around at the end, we're going to talk about some really weird buddy protocols here in Japan. And I'd love to hear if you have any strange ones to share as well. Okay, let's get into it. I want to talk about the buddy check because if you're new, uh, some people learned these acronyms. So for example, I think PADI is B-W-R-A-F. What does that stand for? That's BCD, weights, releases, air, and then final check. And then let me see, BSAC has their BAR, B-A-R, uh, buoyancy, air, releases, kind of basic. And apparently now, I've never seen this. I just did a little bit of research for this video. I have never seen this acronym. Seabag, uh, and that's site emergency, activities, buoyancy, air, and gear. Now, it's kind of interesting. So site, emergency, and activities, th those are great things to discuss. Um, personally, I feel like that's more the briefing stage or actually the, the planning stage. It's nice to see included. I wouldn't really call that a buddy check. Then you have buoyancy, air, and gear. Gear is awfully uh, wide, isn't it? For my folks with open water training, uh, actually, I'm very poor at remembering acronyms. So I, I don't use an acronym system. And what I use is everybody has a head and that's easy to remember and everyone has feet. So I go head to toe. So for me, what I teach the students is start at the head, you know, if, you know, hood, uh, but of course mask is the next one down, right? I have my mask, you have your mask, where is it? Uh, next down from, you know, is gonna be the primary regulator, which is gonna be hanging over here. We're going to breathe the primary regulator. That is also the time that we would check our air pressure and for the primary regulator, I will have the person, the diver, look at their SPG and breathe very hard <sighs> while looking at the SPG. And what they're looking for is any movement. If the SPG moves while you're doing that check, it means your air tank is partially closed. Next down in my case would be my spare regulator is going to be here. So I would also breathe the spare regulator trying it out. I do not have to look at the SBG again because the tank valve, if you checked it once, you don't have to check it twice. Tank is tank. Uh, moving on down, for me, the next thing would be, uh, I don't have any releases, but I have my inflator deflator here. I'm going to blow it up, make sure it deflates. Probably also blow it up and try my, uh, my exhaust valves wherever they may be. Um, other BCs have lots of other potential releases here. So as my buddy is going down, we would check their releases, make sure uh, they, they release and whatnot. At this stage, I will also acquaint myself with my buddy's release systems, especially if this is a new buddy for me, because I want to know how do I get this BC off that diver in the case of an emergency. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a really serious emergency, by the way. It could be, you know, this diver gets very fatigued or some heat stroke or heat fatigue or blister or whatever. You know, I might have to get this BC off that person, help them. And if I don't look at the releases, for example, the Sequest releases, kind of difficult for me if, if in the beginning. And if I looked, you know, if someone looked at a Sequest release, the first time in a panic situation, they might not know how to undo that release. So uh, what I do, if I have a new buddy on a boat and I go somewhere, I'm Thailand or Philippines, I've got this diver, my, my first time buddy, I'm going to look at that BC and I'm going to think of how am I going to get this BC off that person if I had to. That's what you want to think about. Okay, moving down, the next thing down would be somewhere down here, the weight system. For me, I'm going to have some Velcro pockets. Other BCs, as you know, they have various releasable systems. Again, I'm going to look at that. How do I release my buddy's weight in the case that that needs to be released? 
Okay, moving down from there, for me, I've got pockets, so I'm going to be checking there. You know, okay, I have an SMB. Do you or I have some wet notes? What do you have? Um, you know, if we need an SMB at that site, that's a piece of essential equipment. Moving on down from there, of course, at the end, you're going to have your fins, right? Got your fins uh, or not. And remember, when you hop on a boat, if you don't have those things on the boat, if the boat doesn't have an extra pair of one of those things, you're done. So, or if it's a very long walk, we have some entries that are a super long walk. You don't want to get all the way out there and find out you don't have something that happens all the time. As an aside, this is also the stage of the check where you want to verify how an air share would occur. For example, if you notice that your new buddy has an air two or some kind of a breathing device integrated with their inflator, uh, integrated air of some kind, you're going to want to know what's going on. As a review, you recall that in an air share situation, there are just two kinds of things that's going to happen. I'm going to donate the thing I'm breathing or I'm going to donate the thing I'm not breathing. So you're going to want to know from your partner, what are they going to donate to you? And you're going to want to make sure that works and what the procedure is going to be. So I'm going to let them know that where they're getting their air from, from me, which is a primary donate. I'll go to the secondary. Now, at the end of it all, I do advise divers to do a final check, usually a complete walk around, give the tank a shake. You know, very often, some of those tank straps aren't going to be done up right or maybe done up loosely. Something will be loose, something like that, or a hose will be tucked in a tank strap or through a belt or something like that. Give it all a try. Uh, if you're diving a long hose, we always deploy, fully deploy it just to see that it's going to go where it's supposed to go. This is probably getting more into technical, but technical divers will lean back into the water and they'll look at each other to see if any bubbles are coming out. Anyway, you could do a bubble check as well. That is the buddy check. And like I said, I'd really like to know, or what system do you use? Maybe I've left out a few things here, I don't know. 